And Old Woman Lake is coming to the National Arts Center this upcoming Thursday, brought to you by the Ottawa Storytellers. Joining us right now is Storyteller. Louise Prophet Lapla joins us. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks, Dylan. Now, storyteller sounds pretty broad. It sounds pretty like self-explanatory, but what does it mean to you to be a storyteller? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, let's uh, try out the word atsaman. Okay, sorry. Now that's, yes, that's old woman lake. Old woman lake. Yeah. At atsaman. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that is uh, from the Northern Toshone people. That's from the Nacho Nayak Down First Nation. So okay. storytelling to me is um, I'm a story keeper. Mm -hmm. So these stories have been shared with me since I was a child. So okay. it means a lot to me because okay. these are ancient stories of the Northern Toshona people. Now, are they true stories? Well, I'm not going to doubt some of my yeah. grandmothers. Yeah. Yes, they are true stories. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so how long have you been on the storytelling circuit then? Um, probably since I was in my early 20s, which is over 40 years ago. Come on. Really? Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, you're doing well. You're doing well. Okay. So yeah. uh, why do you love the, the art of storytelling? Well, um, I grew up with um, storytelling all around me. I grew up for the first five years of my life living with my grandmother. So she had her all of her cronies, all of her friends were all storytellers. And they told stories in different languages. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother was multilingual. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just love that energy. Mm -hmm. People, they, you know, some of these stories make you laugh. Some of them make you cry. Some of them make you just think. Mm -hmm. But all of the stories themselves are, to me, a part of the past that very few people in Canada have heard. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm one of these uh, strong advocates of stories. It's very important to get those stories out. Exactly, because they haven't been written. They come from the oral tradition. So stories are passed down by word of mouth. They're not written down. Okay. So yeah. can I ask you then, is, would it be important to write these stories down? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I think so. And in fact, I think it's even more important that they're filmed so that people can see body gestures and things like this that describe the story mm -hmm. or are recorded on CD. Well, of course, you know, all, all recorded electronically now. Yeah. Um, once they're written down, you have to be able to write a dialect you know, of English, mm -hmm. or you have to know how to write in the traditional languages. So either way, I think that we are now at this time and this stretch in this era of the history of Canada where all of Canadians have to hear these mm -hmm. very special stories. You mentioned body language. So when you're telling a story, do, do, you, do you really get into the stories? I do. do. Do you put on voices as well? I don't, yes, I do. I take on different characters, even animal gestures, bird gestures. Um, in this particular story, a tsuaman, which means old lady, mm -hmm. lake, um, I'm her. I become her. I become the old lady. And there's also a giant jackfish, giant jackfish that's in the lake. Mm -hmm. And I become the jack. I become the little boy. So it's a one woman show, if you will, but many characters. Okay. A cast of characters. Is that difficult to keep it all straight? Um, yeah, you just move with the story. Okay. So whatever part of the story you're in, you become that person or that being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many times have you told uh, the story to At audiences? Um, I have lost count, actually. Yeah. I've told many times in the uh, inner city schools here in Ottawa. Um, I've told across the north, um, different places in the world. I mm -hmm. went to um, went to Norway, too old at Rido Rido, Greenland. All over the place. All over the world, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so do you find the response? What is the response when, when, you, when you're telling these stories that people should have heard about already or they're hearing about for the first time? I think the people that are hearing it for the first time, Dylan, they cannot uh, wait to be able to access more of the stories. Mm -hmm. Because these stories, for the most part, have just been um, contained within the community from whence they've come. So amongst the Northern Toshone people, the Nacho Nayaktan First Nation people, mm -hmm. uh, amongst the Klinged people, amongst the Vantakuchin people from the Yukon. So it's been just basically community people have heard these stories. And there are the classical stories, there are the communal stories, and there are familial stories. So there's different types of stories. Okay. There's stories for teaching, there's stories for healing, there's stories for just passing along historical information mm -hmm. so that's how this story came into existence 
So this Thursday at the National Arts Centre, the Allen and Arula Rossi Pavilion. So have you performed at the National Arts Centre before? I have, but have. not in this pavilion. Yeah. This is like a fishbowl yeah. experience for me, but they're going to be putting on shades over the windows so it becomes more intimate and mm -hmm. you'll be able to see out onto Elgin. Uh, so how yeah. does the whole night uh, unfold? Okay, well, what I like, what I've been telling my friends, I said you're going to get three stories for the price of one. Because the introduction part of the evening by the Ottawa storytellers, they like to do a little bit of an introduction where the storyteller comes and talks about her process or his process. Then they have a 15 minute um, little intermission. Then you get into the stories. So that would be the first part, the first story. And then the second uh, part of the story will be the old man who gave me this story, mm -hmm. which is relevant to the land claims process in the Yukon. Okay. When I was a young woman, I went around and interviewed a lot of elders so that I could learn more about land use, occupancy, um, where people lived, where people traveled, where people hunted, fished, had children. There was different places for berry picking, mm -hmm. where people died. Hmm. So we recorded all of these as a documentation for land claims negotiation. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk about that at, at the top of that story, mm -hmm. which leads into uh, Atsua Man, okay. which is the old woman lake story. And it all gets underway at 7.30. It does. At the National Arts Centre. Yes. More details, ottawastorytellers.ca. Yes. Louise Prophet leblanc thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Best of luck Thursday okay. at the NAC. Thank you. More daytime coming up. Two amazing local authors are going to be joining us next.